Ned Ryan is the founder of American Majority, and Victor Davis Hanson is a Hoover Institute senior fellow. So, Ned, we laugh not to cry, I think, when you look at all of the things that the federal government uses hard-earned taxpayer money on. Well, we, we, it's, we, we spend money on, on those things we prioritize. That's basic human nature, and, and the elites are making it very clear to us uh, that we are not a priority. In fact, you can see with, through their actions that they hold us in, in deep disdain and loathe us and, and even borders on hatred. And every day, the Washington elites make it very clear that they view us as dirty little ignorant peasants who haven't figured out what our purpose in life is, which is to be the ATM to fund their priorities. But, Katie, this really feels like it's going next level. We've always had irresponsible spending, but now it's gotten to the point where you really feel like the elites are brazenly looting this country. I mean, you talked about the millions used to inject beagle puppies with cocaine and mice getting drunk, hundreds of millions spent on Middle Eastern countries, border security. I think we're at $100 billion this year for a corrupt Eastern European oligarch because I guess Ukraine's borders and national sovereignty are far more important to the D.C. elites than ours. But I think one of the things that was really staggering to me in Rand Paul's list of, of festivist grievances was the Vera uh, Institute of Justice, which got $168 million from us. It's gotten over a billion dollars since 2008 to use our hard-earned taxpayer dollars to help illegals stay in this country illegally. Mm -hmm. And think about the utter disdain of that action to use hard-earned American taxpayer dollars to have people stay in illegally to the detriment of the American taxpayer. And I guess the question I have in all of this, at some point, are the freeborn American people going to stand up and say, we reject being serfs in this feudal administrative state, or are they just going to continue to accept it? And I think that's one of the biggest questions I have moving forward. Yeah, so, Victor, you know, looking at all of the spending, all of the waste, and especially this $1.7 trillion omnibus package that was thrown together, to me, it, it's like this is not the way the American system of government was supposed to, to be. It was not set up this way. I mean, bills were supposed to be very thoroughly debated, and the ones that were debated and vetted were the ones that could actually be passed. With this omnibus bill, we didn't see any of that happening. Well, for the reasons you outlined and Ned outlined, that's why they pushed this through a lame duck Congress during a holiday in the dead of night with 4,000 pages that nobody read because they were even ashamed of what they were doing. We were $31 trillion in debt. We're running a $1.5 trillion deficit. They don't have any of this money. They're just printing it. They're not addressing any of the issues that Americans are worried about, crime, inflation, energy, the border. And some of these are very insulting. They're kind of iconic. You mentioned the FBI. The FBI, three of the last four directors have misled the American people while under congressional oath. In the case of Andrew McCabe, he's lied four times to federal investigators. They've had an FBI lawyer forge a document. They've misled a FISA court. They've suppressed a laptop they knew was authentic and gave the impression that it wasn't. They've hired a contractor, Twitter, and another one, Christopher Steele, to basically suppress free expression and mislead the American people, and we're rewarding them. And that headquarters should not be built anywhere near Washington. It should be put in Pennsylvania or Ohio or Salt Lake City, away from these uh, people that, that are so incestuous. Mm -hmm. And then sanctuary cities are in open defiance of the law, and we're giving money to them to help accommodate illegal immigration. It, it doesn't make any sense. And and uh, I don't know whether the, the, the intent was to insult people, but my gosh, when you're rewarding a building named after Nancy Pelosi, when she's the first speaker in U.S. history to deny members of the opposing party to be on committees and the first speaker to tear up the State of the Union address on mm -hmm. national TV, and she's iconic for that. It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, yeah. it's all based on the, the trust of the people. When you eliminate tax deductions like we did with the state and local taxes, and you up the percentage required, as Biden did when he upped the tax rates, and you're getting three to five hundred billion more in revenue, and then you just insult the taxpayer right. and say, you know what, give us more, 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 more for these things. Yeah. It, it, at some point, you're in civilizational decline and people are going to say, yeah. I'm not going to do it anymore. Right. Well, as we know, lots of the problems we're having with the economy are directly tied to the government overspending. But, Ned, it's not just Democrats. It's not just Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> uh, it is also Republicans. One thing that stuck out to me yes. today as well is this proxy voting that Nancy Pelosi has extended under this 
you know, ruse of COVID continuing. So House members voted for this $1.7 trillion omnibus bill, and they weren't even in town. Well, well, Katie, you make a good point. There were 18 senators that voted for this omnibus. It'd be nice if we had one of the major parties that would actually stand up and fight on behalf of the American people. But clearly, uh, that's too hard for the Republican Party in D.C. to do even that. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you both for coming on tonight. We appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.